one fall off yet. Have you had any uh, accidents at all? We don't talk about accidents. <laughs> I was wondering if you could answer that question. <laughs> job is uh, I run a route from Denver to Arizona transporting cars for uh, uh, various clients. And how long have you been doing that? About a year and a half. So we're in a Ford F450. Yep, 2011. King Ranch. <laughs> Why did you get a King Ranch for this? Well, I figured if I was going to uh, be living out of it, then I might as well be comfortable. And the extra couple of thousand bucks since I bought it slightly used didn't uh, make that much of a difference. And I figure if Resell might be even that much better as well. So you got a car transport on the back. How many cars can you take at one time? Uh, generally four. four. If there, if I find some stuff that's real small, I can fit on five. But uh, more often than not, it's four. Right around 36,000 pounds with the truck, trailer, uh, fully loaded with cars. That's a lot of weight. It's pretty good, but the uh, truck does a pretty good job with it. Yeah, tell me about that. How has this uh, Ford F450 been as a work vehicle? Overall, I'd give it, uh, I'd give it a B. Okay. Um, I've currently got 196,000 miles on it, so that's quite a few miles to put on with carrying heavy weight behind it but I have had problems with uh, the differential in it. So what's happened? Um, it's been three times now that I've basically uh, grinded the differential Turn up into, right onto up into pulp. State Highway 52. Oh, excuse my navigation. Okay. So you were, this is the fourth differential? This is number four, and I'm not sure that it'll make it that much longer. So what, why does it keep going to eating two differentials? What's, what is it about? Is it about the way you're hauling, or is it about the way the truck's designed? Ford tells me that it's yeah. uh, uh, heating up yeah. and basically searing itself in there. Yeah. Proceed uh, on the current road. Basically, this last time, they, since it was finally out of warranty this time, the last time they replaced it, they put a bigger diff cover on it and a different spider gear trying to solve the problem. And So far it's been good. I get a little whining out of it now and then, so I don't know if it's starting to act up again. It's a 50 gallon tank on the bottom. Yep. And then on the top, the top eight inches is a, a toolbox. So I can fill it full of straps or jacks or whatever else I need. So how much, how much, how many gallons? Like you got a 36 at least in the truck, right? I think the truck's about a 36 yep. and uh, this is 50, so. I've got about 90 gallons. It'll take me uh, roughly five to 600 miles. That's a lot. Yeah. And how often do you change tires? A lot. A lot. Uh, <laughs> the, another problem that Ford has, and they know that they have it, but they don't have an answer for it, nor will they take responsibility for it, is something called a death wobble. Yeah. When you hit a bridge separator, concrete bridge separator, or something kind of like that, it will make your front tires start shimming to the point that you either have to slow down to about 15 miles an hour or it'll just keep going. So uh, every six weeks I put on a brand new set of front tires, which is about 
I'd say every 20,000 miles, 15 to 20,000 miles, and move them to the back. Do they get cupped? Is that what happens? And fresh tires is the only thing that'll stop that from happening. Uh, a lot so, of tires. A lot of tires. And speaking of fuel economy, what are you getting? Uh, this current trip yeah. uh, for the thousand miles, I'm getting seven and a half, and that's pretty standard. I average between seven and a half and eight and a half. And what's under the hood? Uh, it's six point seven liter, four hundred horsepower, uh, eight hundred feet of torque. I'm essentially a trucker. Yeah. A glorified trucker. You are a trucker. Um, I guess one of the most surprising things was the uh, government enforcement and regulation in what I was trying to do. I knew I'd have to get a CDL yep. and commercial uh, driver's license, a commercial driver's license, and get my DOT number and all that. What I wasn't really sure about was things like IFTA, the uh, fuel taxes, keeping track of all my miles. Um, I basically have to pay an accountant to keep track of how much money I owe each state that I've traveled through for the fuel I've purchased and the miles I've driven in that state. Ouch. So things like that just kind of add up and irritate you a little bit. All right, this one smells like it's been hosting an all night uh, tobacco party. Yeah. Yeah, let's see what this one smells like. This one smells like, let's see. Ah, it smells like a taxi cab from Eastern Europe. In other words, it smells like 15 Christmas trees were left. Some headlights. Oh, you got some free stuff in here. Half a bottle of water. Look at that. Those are all free. How I can much, help myself to that. How much was this car? 775 bucks. Whoa, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> now you guys got to fix it. Not me. Not you. Just transporter, right? Just a transporter. So it's not this freewheeling jump in my truck and... No, the, the hours of service, they call it, for... I run a, have to run a logbook. Yep. And I'm allowed to drive 11 hours in a 14-hour period, and then I have to take 10 hours off. Now, uh, they've started throwing in more regulations, like before your eighth hour of driving, you have to take a half hour off of driving. And uh, there's something called a reset. When you've driven more than 70 hours in an eight-day period, now you need to uh, basically either have a reset if you want to drive again as soon as possible, which means you've got to spend 34 hours wherever you're at, and two of those sets of uh, two of those time periods have to be between 1 and 5 a.m. So if you get in somewhere at two o'clock in the morning, yeah. you've got essentially two days until you can actually start driving again. So, now, in case people aren't uh, familiar, to drive from Denver to Phoenix is about a thousand miles, give or take. About a, uh, it's about uh, nine hundred miles. Yeah, so it's you can't do it in. 12 hours it's just it takes longer than that right it's two days up and uh, generally two days back and do you sleep in the truck is this something that you can work or do you have to go like to a hotel uh, I don't sleep in the truck yeah. uh, one, small. one is by choice yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're also not allowed to DOT has a problem with you sleeping in your car as well okay uh, you sleep in the car back there so yeah I sleep <laughs> in the cars behind me <laughs> no I've got a really good um, friend here in Colorado that let you, let you bed down for when you're up here. Well, that's me. Yeah. Gives me a good night's stay. There is still the freedom. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I worked in hospitality before and and uh, you kind of so make I've, your own hours, basically. You work your own hours. You kind of make your own schedule, and you're working for yourself. So, the harder you work, or the lazier you are, is what you get out of it. And how about what do you hate about it? Uh, let's see. I guess most people would say the driving, but I really don't mind the driving. Uh, I guess it would be the regulation and the fact that when you pick up a car, everybody thinks it should be there yesterday. Oh, sure. So uh, you you get unhappy customers, but I mean, I run it pretty quick. I'll pick up a car today, and I'll probably have it in Arizona dropped off tomorrow afternoon, but sometimes that's not quick enough for people. I've uh, hauled some cars for some sports players, some Colorado Rockies. Yeah. Um, one of them had a Maserati that, that was pretty low to the ground and had 400 miles on it so it was basically brand brand new and I got that down to Phoenix for him. That's going to be kind of scary because now you've got 
a two hundred thousand dollar car in the back of uh, your trailer there. And, uh, exactly. It's not, <laughs> it's not enclosed, so you keep in mind of uh, rock chips and things like that. If you come up on an area that's had a lot of snow on it and it's got gravel and everything else, you need to figure something out so you're not damaging the cars. Um, a lot of Corvettes and things. Uh, I'd say the Maserati is the, the, coolest, the highest highest end car, yeah. All right, and um, let's get back to the truck for a second. If you had to do it all over again, would you go for a Ford? Would you do the same thing? You think this is, uh, for all the Ford guys out there, is the F-Series uh, truck the best for this kind of work? I would say so. Um, had I needed to do it again, I probably wouldn't have bought as new of a truck yeah. because you're just working it to death anyway. And um, I was originally going to get a still a Ford, but one with a 6.4 liter, the older version. Sure. Uh, saved myself 10, 12,000 bucks, but I couldn't find anything nice that anybody said about that motor for yeah, heavy yeah. towing. So I had to step up to the plate and get the big one. And now uh, you're expanding your business and you're going to a, a full on uh, semi, right? Right. I'm going to get a class eight uh, semi, which is just your standard dual axle in the back uh, or tandem axle truck and an eight car hauler. So I think that'll be the next video when, when you're... That'll be the, the grown-up video, yeah. Yeah, when you're behind the wheel of that bad boy. Right.